there. There is Edward Hooper. Edward Hooper is on the YouTube. We have uh, Chucklehead is gone here. Very good. I'm, I'm glad you could join us this morning, Chuckle. Or Mr. Head, as he prefers to be called. Uh, Matt Spence is on here. Let's get a sound check, boys and girls. Um, can you hear me okay? Can you hear me okay? This is a sound check. If this has been an actual emergency, you would have been informed where to do it in your local area for an emergency broadcast. <laughs> so what's the history, bad blood between Ace and the Sky Pirates? You know, I forgot to mention a little something. Well, um, they often find themselves on different sides of the law. Uh, oh, well, 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 well. Uh, let's see. Uh, 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 um, GW Rules is on here. Hola. Michael Greenhill. Michael Greenhill is our special guest this morning, boys and girls. Michael Greenhill is playing the Sky Pirates. Good morning. So the I guess the bad blood between uh, Phantom Ace and the Sky Pirates is that they've also often found themselves on, on opposite sides of the law. Um, the Sky Pirates, as their name implies, um, have, uh, have uh, you know, participated in a little bit of piracy here and there. Uh, and, of course, Phantom Ace, who is uh, the, uh, you know, the, the hero of justice and uh, bringing criminals in, he's he's often found himself chasing after them. Now, in this scenario, uh, the Sky Pirates are acting as bounty hunters, so they're trying to... We're going to need that. We're going to need the stats for our boys, basically. Oh, it's okay. Our lads. El Inio. Nino. They are. Let's see. So they're fairly straightforward, though. I guess. Let's set it on the stool next to you. Okay. We're going to go live at 10 o'clock. So uh, we're coming up on our <laughs> about two minutes and two second time. There it is right there. And... So, of course, we did that scenario where... Um, the Raven had had supposedly sent sent a, a message to uh, Phantom Ace to arrange her surrender, which actually turned out to be an ambush where they were going to try to capture him. The uh, the the secret, I guess, that has yet to be revealed um, is that uh, Gage is the younger sister to the Raven, so they are actually related. So initially, Gage was an inventor that helped develop the special flying skimmers and thing, and some of the gadgets that the Sky Pirates would use. But as the Sky Pirates became increasingly violent and and you know uh, brought in kind of rougher elements, uh, Gage kind of started moving in the other direction. And and when the Sky Pirates were planning to try to try to capture and kill Phantom Ace, uh, Gage really didn't uh, uh, want that to happen. So she she turned against her sister and, and warned Phantom Ace to make sure that he knew what was going on and to help him out. And ever since then, she has stuck by Phantom Ace's side to help him with her inventions and, and what not. She is, uh, in many ways, his 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 steadfast number two. We are going live. Hey, everybody, this is Dave here at Pulp Alley, and I am with the world's most dangerous Bessie. This is scenario number 27. This is a live game that we are playing right here on Perilous Island, Oklahoma, with Michael Greenhill in Tennessee. How awesome is that? Good morning, Good morning everybody. That is crazy awesome. Um, 
So who does that? Who who does live games with folks all around the world? Uh, no matter how many games you've played, we welcome you to, to come play a game with us sometime. So this is awesome. Michael, how long have you been playing Pulp Alley? Uh, since last August. Since last August. Very cool. And I think you said you've played maybe three or four games. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Have those mostly been solo or were those with someone else? Solo. Okay. Very cool. Very cool. So uh, this is awesome. If, if you would like to participate in one of our games, uh, it really doesn't matter how many games you've played before. Uh, we would love to, to give you the opportunity to come on here and, and play with us. So let us know. You can send me an email or reach out to us via Facebook, or you can put something in the chat. Uh, the world's most dangerous Bessie is right here on the clickety clacks. So she might notice if you put something in the chat. Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> You're taking your chances, mister. Okay. So uh, scenario number 27, this is out of our 2020 scenario of the month series. If you're not familiar with our scenario of the month series, you ought to be because we release a brand new scenario every single month. And sometimes they have a theme, but in 2020, they really did not. In 2020, it was, it was just all over the place. Like, uh, this scenario was actually really designed more as a Western, uh, and it was heavily inspired by uh, a, a Western that was playing at the moment that I was going, gosh, I wonder what scenario I'm going to do this month. And then, and then a Western came on, and I'm like, oh, yeah, we'll do that. So you guys could try to figure out what the Western is. Uh, it is called The Bounty, and they're going to try to track down some criminal elements and run them in. The uh, Sky Pirates are basically bounty hunters in this scenario, hunting for the, the, uh, the smugglers. And, of course, uh, Phantom Ace is coming in with Roswell to, to find the, um, the smugglers as well. Gage, when we rolled for our events, Gage was delayed. So she's going to turn up at one turn <laughs> late in this scenario. Who's playing her? Did you say that? I am playing Phantom Mace, and as my guest, Michael Greenhill chose to play the Sky Pirates, the Ooh. Raven Squadron. How many turns is this scenario? You I think it was eight. That. Is it? Yep. Yeah. So the plot points, let's go ahead and send them to the table. There's only two plot points sitting out here at the beginning of the, of the game. And these represent locations where we may investigate, where we may meet uh, some, uh, some locals who could help us. Here's one. And here's one. And those are the only two plot points that are setting out here right now. So when we complete that one, it could, and I'm just going to scoot that a little bit closer to me. Um, <laughs> when we complete this one, it could lead us to another plot point. Or it could be the trap that the outlaws El, El Indio has planned here. And when we go over here and start talking to this person, whoever it might be, it could actually be a trap. And uh, El Indio and uh, his gang could show up all around us and immediately get to attack. So that, that could be a, a, a little flip of the script, I guess you could say. And over here are the Sky Pirates set it coming across to, right here, Samuel's Garage. And they are headed towards this uh, plot point right here where they believe their informant may have some information for them. Okay. Mr. Greenhill is starting out as the director. Boys and girls, if you haven't already, please take a moment right now and click that like, share, and subscribe button for us. It really does mean a lot. Uh, Michael, are you going to activate first, or are you going to make me go? Let's go ahead and have uh, you go first. Okay. It's fine. Okay. So we know that I am over. I'm going to adjust my focus real quick for you, boys and girls. Is that better? Let me know if you can see that better now. Okay. 
Well, um, remember you activate one character at a time. So when he asks me to activate, I'm going to activate Phantom Ace. Do you have any cards that you'd like to play? Uh, no, not yet. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and activate. I'll move six inches. I'll just kind of move up here and get behind this taxi right there. Would you like me to go again? Yes. Roswell's just going to follow behind, and I'm done. I don't have anything right. else to do. Okay. Let me see. Now, the Sky Pirates, the Raven Squadron, what are you going to do? Who are you going to activate? Let's go ahead and activate Raven. Okay. Have her move over toward the plot point. Okay. Do you want to be standing on it? Sure. Okay. You are standing on it. Who's next? Uh, let's do uh, number two. Okay. Where would you go like her to be? Move over there as close as she could to her. You know, just in case something happens. Sure, sure. Further, like maybe by the doorway, like something like that. Sure. That's a run move. Yeah. But no reason not to. Okay. Who's next? And then uh, let's do 21 and put mm -hmm. her over, you know, kind of behind them, just a little bit away from them. Okay. Back at this corner. Okay. 24 and Speedy left. Uh, and do the same thing with 24 and uh, Speedy. Okay. Out in the open in case some stray bullets start flying. So they're gonna they're gonna all be in cover, or at least trying to get some cover. How does that look? Would you like me to adjust anything? Um, um let the video kind of catch up a little bit. So I'll blather a little bit to make sure you have some time to see what's going on there. You should be. Able I think to the see way that. the, I think the way the camera is angled, we can't really see the the table. Uh, Michael, you should be looking at YouTube. I apologize. I am. Oh, you, you should be able to see it now. Yeah, I can see. I can see Bessie, and I can see the warehouse, and I can see your hand on the table. How weird. Um, could you try to refresh? Yeah. yeah. Let me grab that. Hold on. Give us just a moment here, boys. There we are. See? There it is. Okay. I think, I think my sidekick, Sherlock, messed something up. All right. Just he's, a, uh, he's my buddy right here. Make sure that you got everything. Uh, how are you? Are you, how, are you happy with the location of your fellows? That looks great. Okay. All right. So that will end turn number one. And we are going to start turn number two with the drawing of the cards. So Michael is the director. You can go ahead and flip that over. And uh, Oh, you got an unseen peril, Michael. An unseen <laughs> peril. I'm going to add that to your stack. And I got a bad feeling. Very good. Okay. Got a bad feeling. All right, Michael. Um, as Let's, we start turn number two, what are you going to do now? I'm going to go ahead and, uh, attempt that plot point. Okay. Uh, with Raven? Yes. Okay. So Raven is going to attempt this plot point. Let's see. Let me double check the rules on this. I think we flip over a card right now to see who you're talking so. to. Is that what, what you remember? I think so. Uh, locals. Uh, what'd you say? When a character attempts a plot point, first draw one of the random reward cards. Okay. So because it could be a trap. So one, right. two, three, four, five. So here are the, what are the chances? One in five chances it's a trap. Surely we won't draw the trap on the first turn, on the first attempt. Uh, so there are the <laughs> cards. So one of these cards is the trap and could possibly mean that it is an ambush. Uh, the other cards, we're going to start with this one. This is one. This is five. I guess I'll reroll if I get a six. Card number two. And it is the trap. Oh, my God. <laughs> How inevitable is that? Okay. Uh. Uh, now you have Man. a choice. Now you have a choice. We have not revealed a single. Um, <laughs> we have not revealed a single informant. So this was a well-laid trap, perhaps. 
by Ennio. Now, if, if you want, you can discard a card to put that back into the, um, let's see. Uh, if you draw the trap card, see the details below. Okay. When you draw this card, you have the option to avoid, avoid it or spring the trap. So now you can choose to avoid the trap or spring the trap. So if you avoid the ahead. trap. I mean, everybody's close together. Let's go ahead and spring the trap. Yeah, yeah. Why not? Why not? That's the point of the scenario. Um, we're gonna we're gonna start the fighting early here. So the trap is sprung. If you do not avoid the trap, you must deploy the outlaws, the the uh, leader, the sidekick, and three allies, placing each model one to eight inches from the character in a random direction. So here they come. Here they come. <laughs> and by the way. All of your characters are no longer ready and will not be able to activate this turn. Right. And and my characters, I believe. I think it's I think it says both of us, or it just says all the player <laughs> characters are no longer ready. Um, let's see, springing the trap. If the outlaws are deployed on turn number two through four, then all player characters are not ready for the remainder of the turn and cannot activate, but the NPCs activate as normal. That is the trap. If the outlaws <laughs> are deployed after turn four, then they continue as normal. So let's put out the bad guy. So here is El Inio right here. And he will, and they were, they are coming 1d8 inches in a random direction from the Raven. Right. So he's seven inches off that away. He's seven inch. He's kind of hiding back around this side of the wall. Okay. Uh, he's checking you out back there. Here, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Here is for Nino, five inches off this away. Okay. So he's over here. Okay. And then he has three henchmen. Uh, and that one is way off in the boonies, eight inches off of this <laughs> away, six, seven, eight, somewhere over here. Which camera am I on? You're doing three? Good. Uh, another henchman, four inches off of this away. Oh, they got you surrounded. Another henchman, seven inches off this way. So they're coming up from this side. Cunningly laid trap. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, so what are the henchmen going to do in this scenario? When an NPC activates, they will move up to 12 inches if they can rush a player character. Otherwise, they move six inches toward the nearest player character and shoot if possible. So they will begin brawling. They are going to start the fighting. Um, normally, we go with... Um, Whichever NPC is closest, I think that's probably this henchman here. And it looks sure. like he is a, he's less than three inches away from 21. So he is going to rush 21. My henchman is rolling three die, ten, three die six. Yeah, three die six to brawl you. You could either brawl. Or you could try to dodge. You won't be able to shoot because I was too close. Right. Um, it's the same for both on her for brawl. So uh -huh. and dodge. Let's just go ahead and brawl. Might as well okay. get some shots in if I yeah. can. Yeah. So she's rolling two die six versus his three die six. He's coming up with his baseball bat. <laughs> three die six versus your two die six. He clop. He hits you two. Times. I don't think she was ready for that. And now she's going to have to roll a two dice health check. And would you like to use your. Yeah, let's use the I'm all right card. I'm for all... That. Okay. So instead of revealing this role, I will simply use the I'm all right. Okay. She was not injured. So the next one that goes, um, I think, is going to be uh, Nino over here. Nino is relatively close to. Uh, he is a little over three inches away, so she could shoot at him or brawl or dodge. So El Nino comes running from around the corner here, and he's coming at number two. 
Um, let's let's go ahead and shoot at damage. him. All right. And uh, for this time, we'll use our quick shot to drop down to D6s to gain two dice. Okay. Okay. That's going to get you up to six die six. Plus, you have short range. That's going to put you up to seven die six. As he comes around the corner and he is sprayed with SMG fire. Seven die six. What's my little El Nino rolling? He's only rolling four die eight to try and clobber you. Ouch. Four die eight. Four die eight <laughs> versus your, your rain of bullets. Your thunderstorm yeah. of hot what? She told me I had to do roll these separately. So, all right, all right. Here is the seven dice. Uh, I, sh I should do the active character first, just for politeness. The active character is rolling first. He has four die eight, and he gets a couple fives. Okay. Now, now let's see him take a rain of bullets. <laughs> and Michael, you got a six and a four. Well, what? when I'm when I'm rolling, <laughs> when I'm rolling, you know, things just don't go all that great. Um, oh. he's gonna say take them all, so both of you will have yeah. to roll a two dice health check. Uh, we'll use the black dice for Nino, and we'll use the white dice for number two. Both of them rolling a two dice health check. Here it is. And they all pass. No Yay. injuries at all. <laughs> no injuries at all. And now, and now what? <laughs> now who's closest? I think it's these fellows back here. I guess this fellow here is going to rush Speedy. Speedy could shoot, brawl, or dodge. Wow. Speedy's probably going to need to dodge this time. My little fella is rolling. My henchman uh, is rolling three die six. Hardened criminals. Speedy get, is only a follower. Uh, no, she's an ally. No, she is a follower. Uh, so she's going to be rolling two die six to dodge. Two die six to dodge. Oh, yeah. I want to let you know that if you chose to shoot, you could also roll two die six because of the short range. Gotcha. Gotcha. Would you would uh, you prefer to shoot or do you still want to go with your dodge? Let's go ahead and let's shoot. Yeah, let's go ahead and shoot then. Okay, so you're gonna have the range. white dice. He's coming right at you. She draws her Luger and starts popping. Pop, pop, pop. As he comes running in, she gets nothing. <laughs> he gets one success. Speedy oh. will have to roll a one dice health check. Her one dice health check fails. She is a follower and she is removed. From She's play. out. Oh. And the ambush, the ambush <clears throat> is getting bad. Okay. She's not doing so well as the new character. I know. She's gone. She got <laughs> shipped off. Um, so I guess the next one is green here. He's going to rush at 24. He's rushing at 24, and 24 has all three options available to her as well. She could brawl, she could dodge, she could shoot. If she Let's chose to shoot. shoot, she'd get three dice because it's short range, and he's running straight into the barrel of a submachine gun. Oh, he's yeah, rolling he gets three shot. Dice six. Uh, she's rolling um, uh, three dice six, and the fight is on. The bad guy got a five. You got a five. That means both of the characters will have to roll a one dice health check. Remember, boys and girls, NPCs will almost never block. So although right. he has the option to, uh, NPCs are out to cause as much damage as possible. Both will roll a health check. Uh, 24 is the white dice. Oh, my gosh. The, the 24 goes down, clobbered <laughs> by Mr. Oh. Green. Mr. Green. And the trap has been sprung. That's the all right. She'll make a recovery roll. <clears throat> That's true. And guess who's left? The boss. The boss is around the corner. And I guess he's going to come around. 
Hmm. I mean, he heard all the shooting and the and the fighting. Mm-hmm. I hope. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And says they're going to rush the nearest enemy. So I guess that's going to be number two, and he's going to try to gang up on number two as he comes around the corner. He spots number two, and he's going to try to clobber number two. Number two now will either have to brawl or she will have to dodge. Let's go ahead and uh, let's dodge. Okay. What's her dodge? Uh, 3D8. Yeah. 3D8 in dodge. And El Nino is, uh, oh, El Indio. El Indio is rolling four die ten. Four die mm. ten of brawling. Oh, he doesn't have anything. Oh, <laughs> let's see what let's see what it looks like when you don't have anything. Okay, look at that though. Look at that, boys and girls. He got an eight. She got an eight. He got a five. She got a five. He got a seven. No, she got a seven, mm. and he got a five, and you can block all of his hits. Look at that, boys and girls. She's the white dice. He's the red dice. Her eight blocks his. Her five blocks his. Her seven blocks that, and she takes no damage. If you wanted to, you could back up one inch away. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. That's basically going to put you like back inside the doorway. Uh, I can't go. I can't go back this way because it would put me too close to Mr. Green. Remember, right. you can't disengage and be within an inch of an enemy. This space is also occupied, so the one right. inch away is going to put you basically just inside the doorway, like so. It should catch up eventually, and that's it for turn number two. Turn number two is done. And it's time for recovery checks. We have one, you know? <laughs> one recovery check. 24. 24 is up. Yay. Now, 20, 24, you could remain in contact with Mr. Green, or you could back up an inch back into the warehouse. What do you think you want to do? Mm. Let's keep her. Let's keep her there with Mr. Green. Okay, she wants so to tie some... Mr. Green up. Yeah, she wants yeah. to keep him tied up. Okay, and that's that's the end of the turn. Go ahead and draw a bullet and draw cards. Here is the card for uh, um, for Michael. Michael draws a warmed up. Well, that's nice. A warmed up, and I draw a misfortune. A misfortune, and that's it. Okay, Michael. We are starting turn number three. The winner of this scenario is, is, the, is the side that is able to put El Indio down. So this is basically the major plot point. He is the goal of the scenario. Putting him down is what wins you the scenario. Gotcha. Michael, you are still the director. Remember, boys and girls, NPCs can never become the director. Uh, and although Michael suffered some injuries in there, and maybe he didn't clearly win all those fights, I wasn't able to do anything to to steal the, uh, the initiative away. So that means Michael is still the director. Don't get Gage. Oh, I get to put Gage out? What the heck? I should have done that last turn. But 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 it doesn't matter. She wouldn't have been able to do anything anyway. Um, cool. so, <coughs> are the other plot points obsolete now? I don't think I, I think we could still do them but I don't think I'm going to um, I don't think it's removed I, I, I'm going to probably ignore it anyway but that's a good mm. question I'm not going to stop here and read it but I, guess I, I don't think I'm going to worry about it the, the plot points in this scenario are, are very helpful and very nice, but I don't think I'm going to take the time to mess with them. I'm going to try and get over here and see if I can cause some damage. 
Uh, Michael, you are the director. What are you going to do? Let's uh, let's go ahead and have uh, can Raven shoot uh, the leader, their leader? I think she could. I or would think she, she have to could. shoot the other guy? No, I don't think so. I mean, based on the angle that I have, I think they're both about an equal distance, and therefore she could pick the target that she wanted. This okay. guy is probably the nearest. Mr. Green is probably the nearest target. But, I got you. Um, but he's engaged. That's right. That's right. So she doesn't have to shoot him. Now, the one question oh, right I on. would have for you is maybe you would want to jump behind the uh, – Maybe you would want to back up an inch and get behind get the cover of that truck. Yeah, uh, that makes sense. Rather than shooting from the open territory right there. But that's yeah, up let's to do you, that, brother. Okay. Yeah, so let's she do that. Jumps, she jumps behind the fender. She leaps back here. Let me see if I have any dirty cards to play when she activates. <laughs> Let me see if I have something special. A little, a little something, something for. Okay, you know what? I don't. I don't have anything. Something, something for, for Michael. Okay, so you leap behind the the fender, and we'll say you're in cover now, and you can shoot at El Indio. Yeah, and let's use his. Uh, let's use her trick to uh, let's discard the uh, out of ammo card. Okay, to get discard a plus one to shoot. Ammo. And she is now up to five D. Uh, wait. Did I did I mess that up? I'm not sure. What's her normal shooting? Oh yeah, forty two, four yeah. nine ten. Holy crap! So she's rolling five d ten, and El Indio is also rolling five d ten right back at her. Is it short rolling. range? Yes, because of the short range. And here is your five d ten. We're gonna roll is these. Sep what? What? Did what did you say? Did I mess something up? Are you saying there's an extra one in there? See, she starts with four short range. Yes, she's at six. Yes, Michael, you have six dice. Oh, right on. Six. Hopefully, dice. she puts them to good use. Let's see how they go. Well, you know, when I'm rolling, it's always it's always something. <laughs> uh, she rolled two misses, a one and a three, so she has a ten, a ten, a nine, and nice. a four. Good shooting there, Tex. Good shooting. And now we'll roll uh, four, no, five die ten for El Indio. <laughs> five D ten, and he scores all. Oh, no. He scores That's two nice. eights. Now, Michael, how dangerous do you play it? Let's take them all. He says take them all. He says take them all. El Indio is going to have to roll a four-dice health check, and the Raven will roll a two-dice health check. Here is for the Raven. The Raven is not injured. El Indio is. He takes an injury, my dear girls. And he is <laughs> injured. All right. You got him on the ropes, brother. Now what do you do? You are still the boss. You could put him down this turn. Well, oh yeah. not. Let's see. She can't really see him inside from inside the warehouse, though, right now. No. Um, but again, she could move before she shoots. She could jump over to where, like, Raven is, like, right yeah, back let's do on that. the other side of that truck. Yeah, let's do that if there's a clear spot over there for yeah, her. Yeah, I think there is. I think there is a <laughs> clear spot next to her there. Okay. And from there, you could see her, and you would have cover. Uh, he's standing out there in the open. Now, are you going to use your quick shot again? Yes. Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. Yeah. So what's that going to get you up to? Seven, seven D6. Yeah, I think you're right. I think you're right. You start with four die eight. You're going to cook it down to six die six. And then you're going to cook one more in there for your short range. And that's going to be seven die six. El Indio is now injured, and he's been in a fight. He's only rolling three die eight to shoot back. Thank goodness. Here, here is the shooting <laughs> from here. Is that with the short range? Four die eight with the short range. Yeah. Here is the shooting from uh, number two, spraying her SMG. 
and she gets two four no three fours and a five that was some good shooting there el indio has four die eight because of the range and he gets uh, an eight a six and two fours he also has four successes do you just Ooh. say take them all yes yes he just says take them all. And so Indio is going to have to roll a four dice health check and uh, number two will have to roll a four dice health check. We're going to do number two first. Number two, he could win the game right here. Number two is injured. Her cover will not save her. You'll notice there were two failures in there and the cover yep. will not save. His shots are too powerful from his Oh yeah. 40 I mean, bomb. that's why he's the boss. I'll just set it there so I can try and remember. But El Indio is going to have to roll a four dice health check as well. And here it is. He also fails. And he's now down to a health of D6. He's so close to going down. He could go down this turn. All right. Let's see. Um, you still have some activations to go. If you wanted to, you don't have to continue yeah. activating. You could make me go. You cannot let's, make uh, the NPCs go. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, let's see. The other two people are both still engaged. Correct. So I guess we'll go ahead and just play those out real quick. Okay. All right. Well, we let's have 24 with... fighting Mr. Green. Mr. Green is rolling three dice, six to clobber her. 24. You could either dodge with one die six or brawl with two die six. <coughs> uh, let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and brawl. I was using the black dice for the bad guys. I'll do. I'll mm -hmm. try to continue that. So he's rolling three die six, and twenty four is brawling back with two die six. Here is the fight. She sc scores a six. He scores a six and a four. He will say take them all. That means she will have Wait. to roll. What? Well, she's the active character. She's the active character. You are correct. I'm so glad I got somebody here <laughs> keeping me in line. Well, somebody that knows how much. to. Somebody around here that knows how to play this damn game. Hey, <laughs> Michael, you're the active character here. So if you wanted to, you could uh, shave one of these hits off of here to try yeah, to mitigate some of that damage. Okay, so she says I'll block that, and that means she will only have to roll a one dice health check. Her one dice health check is a failure, and she is down. Oh. Okay, so now 21. 21 is rolling either two dice to dodge or two dice to brawl. What is she going to do? Let's do the brawl. She's rolling two dice to brawl, and Mr. Blue probably, Jeans. Probably going to get hit anyway, so you might as yeah, well give some Mr. back. Mr. Blue Jeans is rolling three dice six to Lobber her with his baseball bat. Okay, you get two fours this time. You will not be able to block even if you wanted to. He got Woo! two sixes and a five. So uh, 21 will be rolling a three dice health check. And yep. um, Mr. Blue Jeans is rolling a two dice health check. And here it is. Mr. Blue Jeans passes. 21 oh, does not. Close. And 21 <laughs> is <laughs> down. Clobbered by the baseball bat. Okay. Let's see. She's just great. She didn't miss it by much. I know. Uh, gosh. El Indio is barely hanging on here. If I could get one lucky shot in on him. Mm -hmm. um, I could steal. <laughs> well, let's go ahead and I could steal victory from you. Um, yep. Well, let's go ahead and see if you can do that and have you activate. I don't think I got range to anything. Are you switch sending me to top cam? Yeah. Yeah, see, I can't get there. I can't get there. Twelve inch run gets me down around the corner. Did you pop in through oh no, you're fine. Hmm. Wonder if okay, so a twelve inch range just on a on a on a on a run is gonna get me to there. Even if I ran through the warehouse, I really wouldn't be able to see much more. So I'm going to go that way. Now, what about what about Roswell? Roswell has a 16-inch really run. 16-inch yeah. run. But that's still not going to reach him. But what I might be able to do 
Roswell will get up to there. And then uh, Gage, so that will end. Uh, Phantom Ace did no shooting. He just ran up there and, and did that. Roswell just ran up there. Um, and now Gage, I guess she's just going to take off running as well. Gage did roll her inventor skill, and I think that's what the delay was, is that she was she was back at the uh, base trying to work on a new invention. And, hey, when uh, she activates... Uh -huh, do you want to play something? Going. Yeah, let's play Danger. Okay. I um, was asleep when he did hey, it. Hey, hey, <laughs> I... I don't want to discourage you from from throwing that on one of my characters, but if you can, I use, throw that on their characters. Yes, you could. Oh, okay. See, that's why we play with you. Do you, we you want to hold on to it? Yeah, let's do that. Because that would give you actually two chances, right, boys and girls? He yeah. can play that danger and that that out of ammo. Let's just double check that real quick and make sure. I want to. I want to verify. Just, I'm pretty sure it just says the the player of the league that takes him down. Let's see. Um, it ends if El, El Indio goes down. So if you could put him down with one of those traps, you're gonna you're gonna basically win this turn, and it's yeah. gonna be an incredibly short game. Um, Outlaws deploy. Okay. Okay. Well, that's that's all it says. Let's see. If one of your Let's see. No, you just get extra. Um, it automatically ends if he goes down. You do earn extra <laughs> points, like extra reputation and experience, if you take him down in a fight, which this would not be a fight if you use oh, right, right. the brawl. But since we're not keeping track anyway, like 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 that actually matters. Would you would you prefer to throw that on Gage or do you want to save it? I'll save it. Okay. So Jake Gage is just going to take off running towards the cabbage cart. <laughs> Boys and that was, girls. That was just such a bad role for you on setup when she had to be delayed. Yeah, yeah. All right. So as we start turd number, you know, I was really hoping that, that Roswell would get within range, that she would be the closest, but she's not. <laughs> um, Raven is still the closest target here. Raven is still the closest. So El Indio will automatically try to rush, uh, at, at the Raven. Um, but there are actually closer, closer NPCs. So we have other stuff to do before we get to El Indio. Remember that boys and girls, you're supposed to start with the NPCs that are closest to the, uh, to the, uh, Yep. the enemy here so i guess that's going to end up being mr green and that's where mr we're green at. that's where we're at mr green will activate he will step let's over he will step let's over. uh go ahead let's play an unseen let's play an unseen peril on mr green oh okay okay unseen peril on mr green flip it over for me here it is. It is two successes with finesse or cunning. I don't think Mr. Green has the finesse or cunning to handle that. Neither does he have the dodge. He will just simply go to a two dice health check. That means he failed his, his challenge. He will not move, and he goes down right there. As the sign falls off of the building and clobbers him <laughs> oh, in, no. in, the, in the head. Brought down by the rain of bullets that have been flying around. Uh, the next character is going to be Mr. Blue Jeans. Uh, okay. He will now activate. And he is like one and a half inches or so from Raven. So he's going to just sure. rush at the Raven. He's rolling three die six. He is not rolling three die six because he's already been in a fight. He will be rolling two die six to brawl you. Raven, how do you reply? Um... I can brawl him, but can I use, uh, well, because he was too close to shoot. Correct. Right. So I Correct. can brawl him, um, but can I use the warmed up to ignore the multiple fight penalty? <clears throat> yes, you could. Yes, you could. So he used warmed up, so he's not going to oh, lose nice. any dice to the multiple fights. Uh, oh, and mean. she is rolling two die eight. Two die eight to brawl versus two die six. Here is the fight. 
You got a five. He got a four. Couldn't block it if he wanted to. Both of you have to roll a health check. L and the Raven is injured. The oh. Raven is injured. And what? Mr. Blue Jeans what? avoids the damage. Okay, now I'm getting too many <laughs> buttons out here. All right, so put that button on. That was 20. Was Number two? Yeah. Okay, go ahead and move it off of there now. Number two and Raven are both injured now. Well, let's see who's next. Um, well, let's just go ahead and do the one that really matters. And that's going to be, that's going to be El Indio. Raven is yep. still the closest target. So, so when he. I'll go ahead and play the danger on him. Okay. You play the danger on him. Flip over the challenge. The challenge is oh. one with cunning. How cunning mm. is Indio? He's only got <laughs> two, oh, three die ten normally, but he's injured, so he's only thinking with three die six. He's thinking okay. with three die six because of his injury. He only needs one of these to avoid that danger, and it is... No! He does not get it! That means he won't be able to move either, and he will have to roll a one dice health check. This is the game-winning roll right here. This is the game-winning roll right here. If this is uh, under a four, uh, Michael has won the game. Uh, boys and girls, if you haven't already, please make sure you click that like and subscribe <laughs> button. If you'd like to sign up to play with us sometime, be sure and do that. And I hope you all are enjoying a nice can of Cooner Beans today. Here is the game-winning roll. If this is less than a four, it is, and he goes down. And the scenario <laughs> ends just Huzzah. like that. Yay, Michael! Wow. Yay. Right on. Yay, Michael! That was a quick one. We haven't had one like that before. Yeah. You know, yeah, out of all the games fast. we played, and I, I want to say that we... We... Uh, go ahead and switch that back over. That was a ball, though, Michael. Yeah, it was we a lot of fun. We want the scenarios to go that way once in a while. It, it kind of keeps the – the uh, sometimes it's just going to go that way. You know, and that's, that's Sometimes fine. the action is fast. That's right. Sometimes it just goes that way, and it's, just, it's not a big, long, drawn-out scenario, but sometimes it goes that way. You get the dice to roll in your favor. You get the right sequence of cards, the right events and everything. And, and it just goes that way. So well, yeah. that's fun. It, it would be too, I think, you know, games that try to stop that become too predictable, you know, and then and, and this, we were once in a while, something wild and crazy is going to happen like that. And this ended up being a, like a three turn scenario. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah. That worked out. Oh, that there's on his 3D6, not getting a single one. Not getting a single success <laughs> on that. Not getting yeah. a success. Yeah. Not getting a single success on a three die six and then failing his health check as well. So, yeah. you know, several failures in a row yeah. there. Um, so that was cool. So um, what we haven't done is is schedule, I think, hardly any other games after this at all. So I will be reaching out to a bunch of you um this next week to try and get more folks scheduled because right now we're looking at that i don't know exactly what we're going to do uh we may just continue to go through i'm having a lot of fun with the 2020 scenarios right now last year's scenarios of the month so we may just continue going through that and have some fun with it and we're kind of loosely placing it in king city anyway so it's a lot of fun um, we have given away some pens. We haven't sent very many out though. Michael, did you get yours? Yes, I did. You got your With pen? Shipment. Okay. Okay. Um, so I'm going to be sending or, or Bessie will be sending the other pens out. We have, uh, all the rest of them still left to send out. Got some of them packaged up. We just need to get labels on them and, and sent out. So, if you won one of our pins in the uh, Tuesday uh, videos, then uh, then uh, 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 you know it, we haven't forgot about you. It's 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 still coming. 
We've also been thinking about trying the way, trying to change the way that we do our giveaways and maybe change it to a drawing. I, I both, I, I like the way it, we we're currently doing it, but I know inherently that maybe there's an unfairness about it, but you know, I don't know that we can ever, you know, be completely fair about all this stuff. anyway. And, and I don't know, I don't want it to be too unfair, I guess. Um, you know, cause it's almost, it's almost based on like your internet speed, yeah. you know, and things like that. You're, you know, what I think, uh, one of the viewers last week said that by the time they actually heard the question, the, they were already seeing the answers pop up in their chat window. So, right. you know, if you have like a slow internet or something, or depending on where you are, um, it was really interesting that one week where, they were all international winners. There was, there was a Canadian winner and an Australian winner and a UK winner. And I was just, I, I always figured that they would be at a disadvantage due to the, you know, due to how far <laughs> they are away. Yeah. You know, you would think there would be a, a much more significant lag for them, but man, they, they had all three of the top spots. So very interesting. Anyway, the other way of, that we could possibly do it is to have everybody kind of uh, enter one week, you know, with a secret word or whatever where you, you know, I could say something like enter the word uh, uh, pulp alley pen or something like that, a phrase in the chat. And then everybody that enters that, we would put them into a drawing and then we would actually do the drawing the next week. So I guess that's the other option. And I'd like some feedback from you guys as far as uh, are we okay with the way it's working or should we look at trying to, you know, do it as a drawing uh, sort of thing, have Bessie draw it out of a hat, which reminds me that if you haven't been tuning in for the Tuesday live night videos or not Thursday. Tuesdays, Thursdays, uh, Bessie has been wearing a, a lovely assortment of different hats. So you got to tune in for that. Got to okay. try the Fez. Yes, yes, Fez next. <laughs> sometimes it depends on how her hair is done, though. Like sometimes, oh, sure. depending on how she has her hair fixed, like certain hats don't really work. So I mean, mine either. I mean, see, it's, you know. Same thing with my hair. I, some days I just can't <laughs> do a darn thing with it. I have it in curlers, you know, things like that. Um, do we have any questions for the boys and girls? Uh, so. No? Okay. Then I think we're going to call that a game for today. That was a short, quick one. I'll give you guys back the rest of your Sunday. Thank you so much for joining us today, and we will see you next time. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Thank you, Michael. That was awesome. Well done, buddy. Well done. You did so good. That was a lot of fun. <laughs>